hello everyone welcome back to my channel in today's video i'm going to be showing you guys how i achieved this look using the opre gel x system i did a video some years ago on it um, my first impressions um and now i am of course doing another video i use these on my little sister to create these cloud nails and she wanted long nails we're in quarantine of course so she's it's summer she has no school so she wanted these crazy long nails they were so crazy to see on her little hands um but she managed with them she kept them on for several weeks um so i'm gonna be showing you guys how i did this <laughs> so these are her nails beforehand they were not i hadn't done her nails in a while so they were just like this just kid nails um so i'm going in with my skiver bit from atwood industries and i am removing the cuticle from her nail plate after her hands of course sanitized and everything like that spray a little alcohol on them i love the um, cleansing alcohol from sally's um it's a cherry scented alcohol and i've been using that for almost since when i started doing nails for a lot of years now so um i really enjoy it so i use that throughout the service for different um, parts but it's great um, to soften the um, the cuticle on the nail plate, push back the skin if you're using a pusher or anything like that without the, having to introduce water into your service. So I removed the um, cuticle that was growing on the nail plate and I'm also buffing the surface with this crosscut bit from Atwood Industries. Um, this is a diamond bit. It's essentially what a sanding band is, but in metal form. Um, it has that sandpaper texture. It is perfectly safe for the natural nail on a low speed and low pressure, just like a sanding band would be or a hand file. Um, you just want to make sure you have the right grit. You don't want something too coarse. You don't want the speed on the e-file too fast and you don't want to have too much pressure and come at the nail at a wrong angle and create any type of ridges or rings or anything like that. So I'm doing this to remove the shine from the entirety of her nail, help remove any of um she had some clear polish on her nails or something like that i believe i don't know but it's just get everything off the surface get it buffed remove that shine you can see me cleaning up her natural nail shape she wanted to leave the length where she could we're doing the opera gel x which essentially i don't want to call it that and i don't mean this in any type of bad way it's kind of like a press on in a way it's a full nail cover so um we're not going to be building the nail these are already shaped nails you just kind of have to clean it up a little bit if you're not familiar with this system it's the first one i seen like this again years ago and there's been some other ones i won't say they're copiers but opera was the original one that i seen and i hadn't seen it beforehand i may be wrong just let me know below um so you can see i'm using the round bit again it's a diamond bit i'm using it on a low speed and i'm just buffing off that dead and callous skin that she has i don't want to remove a whole ton of skin again she's my little sister i don't want to do a whole bunch of cutting and everything like that just kind of buff that skin okay so i'm be using the sculpted coffin medium gel x extensions i forgot these were medium they look so long on her little fingers i thought they were long um until i'm watching this doing the voice over they do have extra long now they just came out with um this is the extend gel that they made years ago and the primer from years ago i again i bought this a long time ago this is not the same lamp this is one i got from amazon led little hand lamp um i'll try to put a link down below if you're interested it's great when you're doing crystal work um and of course perfect for this but they do a whole different setup they do um the extend gel in a bottle now instead of in the pot so just definitely check them out and see what new they have to offer um so you can see me fitting these tips i don't want them to touch her um her live skin i want this to only touch the nail plate so if you need to customize them, them and kind of use a hand file to taper them in in any way you can you want to be as close as possible though and a lot of times you don't even need to because this is a fully a full gel system so you can fill in any areas you have the base gel that you put down so get it as close as possible but do not touch the skin so you can see i'm using the cross cut bit and i'm buffing the back of that extension we want to create adhesion so we want a rough surface on a rough surface so i'm going to be using as a base the rubber base gel that i usually use 
Um, I went ahead and cleansed the nails with acetone. Before I did all this, I sprayed them with my alcohol, like I always do, just to get the dust and come to a clean space. I cleansed the nail again with acetone to dehydrate, balance the pH. Um, you can use the actual dehydrator if you like, but the rubber base from Gel Bottle Ink doesn't call for it. So this is going to um, help with our adhesion. So I went ahead and cured that in the light. I'm dusting the back of those tips that I buffed. Um, and I'm going in and I'm applying the primer. This is, again, a soft gel extension. It may look like plastic. It is not. It's made of soft gel. So we want these different components to adhere to each other the best possible way. So that's why we create a rough surface. And then we're going in and priming that the back of that nail to ensure that the gel that we put back there and on the nail everything adheres to everything we want the natural nail to adhere to our rubber base our rubber base to adhere to our extension and so on and so forth so i am going in and taking this product now this is where the curve the learning curve comes in this is very tricky and you will see me fail a whole bunch of times so just excuse that um again i got involved with opre years ago they were doing um the application the directions were a little different from what i see now and what i notice now i see sometimes they'll paint um different ambassadors when i refer to they um they'll paint the entire nail just like you see me kind of doing with that brush like putting the gel just on the whole thing and then go in and kind of flatten it out and kind of go down and swipe it as you can see it's kind of hard to explain but you see what i'm doing i've seen them do that I when I first got it, the instruction told you to put a good amount of gel towards the back and then compress it down from the cuticle area towards the free edge. Now, I'm not saying that's not applicable anymore. That's just the primary um, application that they would um, promote. I see now they have other techniques and stuff. So please definitely I'm not the ambassador for them. I'm just a, a consumer. I'm a professional nail technician that just happens to be a consumer of this product. And I'm just telling you my experience with it and how I achieved this look on my sister. So you can see I applied some product on the nail. I didn't cure. Um, and then I put a good amount on the back. And I'm trying to use this technique. I feel like I thought I could do and I've seen. <laughs> so you see me, I'm struggling. I'm trying to get the air bubbles out. I know um, I'm just in any enhancement Um you don't want air bubbles especially very big ones you could overcome small ones but you don't want them you know big that now you're sacrificing the integrity of the nail we don't want that um so you can see i'm pushing at the back of the nail holding that product down and then when i get it where i want it and close enough and clean up any excess gel i'll go ahead and take that lamp and flash cure i don't want to hold it too close to the natural nail because it that gel gets hot so i'm holding it at a good distance away and i'm moving my finger around you see my thumbs covering that top left corner and um, so the gel won't cure there so as it's becoming to set i remove my thumb just so i can cure that area and then i have her put her hand in the light to go ahead and get a full cure but we want to just make sure it stays down so again i'm using the same technique that i think was working we don't want to get product on the skin, so keep that in mind um, when you're going back there and polishing. This nail was much more difficult because she chose to keep so much of her natural nail. Um, it worked fine. It was it was hard because I had to put more product in order to get good adhesion. Um, I had to put more product for a longer distance, so I had to make sure air bubbles didn't happen for a larger span of nail space um so and then i didn't want product to run out the side i want to keep it you see you see what i'm going through i had to clean that up i took some acetone and a little brush i was making mistakes okay <laughs> but again it happens you know i think this is a great system there is a learning curve i would like to um explore it more honestly um for myself i've used it in other instances i use it for press-ons just to glue nails on it's absolutely great for that um it's i really think it's a great system and like i mentioned there are other ones out there who have since came i don't know much about them i know kiara sky does it um e couture 
um, wildflowers i think does one i don't know if they're plastic tips or gel tips i'm not sure but i see other companies do that i don't know if they have made any advancements past what opre has put out in the nail space um but if you know anything good absolutely tell me about it tell others about it down below share what you know good of course i heard i seen long hair pretty nails um said that it was just the, the title of her video or comment she made that the um kiera sky jelly tips she prefers those i'm not sure why i should watch the video and maybe you should too we should all tune into that right <laughs> once i get them all applied and cured i'm gonna go in and kind of clean up the shape a little bit it has that little tab at the end and um i just want to make sure the shape is nice and clean and then I want to, I don't know if you could tell, I was talking and I meant to point out that the pointer finger that you see me filing right now, when I went in and buffed the back of the nail, I kind of pressed a little bit too hard. So I created a, where it kind of flipped up towards the cuticle area slightly. So that's why I'm going in and um, either way, I want to go ahead and make that cuticle area flush um, no matter what the thing is if it's a problem or not we want to make that cuticle area nice and flush we don't want it to be bulky so i'm going in and i'm just taking down that just to get a nice cleaner cuticle area and make sure if and this is where i say if it's not a hundred percent to the nail once you kind of file and go in and do these little details you'll you know get it nice around the cuticle area as long as you know how to use your tools and what you're looking for so now I'm going in and just buffing the um, surface of the nail. You see, I don't have to do any major actual shaping to the surface, and that's the beautiful part. I'm buffing the nail just to remove the shine. Um, they say you can use acetone if you'd like. I just wanted to have a nice buff surface. That's what I like to work with. And now you can see I buffed it, sprayed it down with alcohol, and... Um, then use the brush to get all that dust off so you can see how beautiful it looks at the cuticle area how flush the sidewalls look amazing and the effort didn't take as much miss that whole step of doing any major shaping especially shaping the surface and finish filing surface of the nail if you're starting out or you just want to save time definitely recommend so this is a beautiful nude glitter color that i'm loving lately and i am so excited to tell you guys more information on these colors in the future this is a beautiful very pigmented blue color beautiful bright blue color this is a very pigmented white gel polish that i'm going to be doing um our art with this is a crazy looking uh little ombre brush from wildflowers i got years and years ago and i've really beat it up but it works for the application today so i'm using this sheer nude color um, I love the sparkle because of the look we were going for with the um, the clouds, the little stars, and the dot, you know, whatever look we were going for. It just felt like the sparkles needed to be there. So usually, you guys, I don't do a lot of um, horizontal ombre with gel polish. Vertical ombre, I think, looks much better or it's easier to obtain for me personally. Um, Chan Legend or O'Hill, if you're familiar with him on instagram he'll pull out a horizontal ombre all day with gel polish for me it's not like that okay <laughs> so i'm doing my best i the reason i chose to do it this way one because i usually do ombres with acrylic and since we're using a whole different enhancement type doing it with acrylic made no sense i was trying to save time and effort and smell i don't want to work with acrylic a lot lately because of the smell so that's why I chose to do this. Also because we're doing artwork over it. So it's not really the main focus. You can see I went ahead and applied that nude and that blue. And just used that ombre brush to blur the lines between them. So it's not a hard transition. I did it the best of my ability. Then I cured. What you can see me doing now is a second coat. I went ahead and applied that nude. But I didn't apply all the way up at the cuticle area. Because I don't want to bulk it up. So I just kind of fan that down a little bit so there wasn't a harsh line and then i'm just again going in and um blending that what we're looking for is a blend in color between that nude and that blue now what you can do is literally take the nude and blue and mix it together and apply that as a transitional color itself between the two 
it'll take a little more time and effort but you can so you can truly know what that color is apply that and then go in and blend it some more um in color theory this isn't probably the best blend to make because that nude is a little more on the peachy side of things and blue is blue and peach is kind of we'll say orangey um it's in the orange kind of family in between there orange yellow and we know that those are um, opposite colors on the color wheel which means that they are more difficult to mix so again not the most ideal mix that's why you you'll see like navy and blue and black and things like that purple ombres with nude are more difficult just because of color just because of color color theory you start mixing opposite to go colors together and it can become muddy now that there is um exceptions because it's it depends on medium but you're you're literally mixing tones together paint liquid applications that's when you're going to get into tricky areas when you start mixing purples with yellows and blues with oranges and reds and greens and things like that so I'm just repeating the same process. What I'm also having to overcome with this is the fact that I've used a clear um, enhancement and her nail is whatever length they were that she came to me with. And so I'm having to kind of camouflage the natural nail underneath. Then I'm having to ombre these two colors that are not ideal and not only are they not ideal in a medium that I'm familiar with, this would be a difficult ombre in acrylic, which I usually use for ombre, horizontal ombres. I'm using a whole different medium. So, again, we're doing the best that we can. And, I, I mean, I really am not displeased with it, again, for what we're doing, because we're doing artwork on top of it that's going to, you know, make this not really the focus. What we're trying to do is getting across it's a nude glitter to blue ombre. Please keep in mind and remember that I am curing in between layers. You don't want to cure when you're mixing two colors together. Of course, you want them both still wet and pliable. But once you get it, you know, where it needs to be, go ahead and cure. Now, I'm going in with that sheer nude back towards the cuticle area. And I'm just going to feather that down. And because it's sheer, it's going to make a better ombre because you're able to see the blue through the color and it helps with the transition that's also why i didn't use a, an opaque nude um because i wanted to be able to blend them a little bit better so that's why this color worked amazingly um and you can see this is just me working in super super fast speed just trying to give y'all as much content as possible just throwing in all my clips that i can that i probably would usually leave out um but so this is her Look at these little C curves on the, the nails. That's what Opre naturally has built in. These are, again, the sculpted tips, which means that the nail is has more of a C curve. Um, they have natural um, tips, which means that it has less of a C curve. And it all depends on the person's nail shape, if one's more appropriate than the other. Some For some people, both of them may work fine. But if you have a very curvy nail bed, the sculpted ones may be better. If you're a nail technician, you are going to want, want to invest in all different shapes, lengths, and both cuts and whatever they do to give to have all the best options. So you can see I'm using that white gel polish I showed you guys, but I'm using it on a um, the Presto Bambina liner brush um, just because I kind of like this brush for certain art applications and I liked it for this. And I'm using a stippling brush I got from Wildflowers years ago. I should have... Okay, so these, of course, are my little sister's nails. <laughs> Let's get that out the way. I could have and should have gone in with a sponge to kind of make it a better blend out. <laughs> um, this was late. I, you know, I was making do. I was in the middle. I, I mentioned in a little video before relocating. So I didn't know where everything was. Actually, that's my real excuse. Um, so I just had that brush there and I'm just using it kind of blend out. Again, it worked um, for what we're going for. I'm always going to be a perfectionist to the end of me. Um, so you can see I'm I'm just going off of, I had like one little reference picture, but otherwise I'm just going with what I think clouds look like, I want them to look like. I could have stopped 
at any point you can see him how indecisive i am <laughs> and this is sped up i just want to tell you guys it's sped up and edited so this is me really trying to eh, do i like it blended do i want to keep that one solid it looks good when it's not blended um i maybe wouldn't have blended as many as i have or the same way in retrospect but you live and you learn you do what you want if you love it do it try it tag me in it um but you can see i'm just doing this shape if you need a point of reference all the time please use a point of reference when you're doing artwork um go ahead and google you know you don't have to google actual cloud nails just google like images of clouds if you want it more car you know cartoony you don't want it super realistic google that um and you know kind of imitate that so you have a point of reference and you're not just going off of you know what your mind tells you something looks like because sometimes there's little key things that make something look like what it is and hopefully that makes sense so next i'm drawing these i don't know the correct word for this and i feel like i know that star is not the right word but these are called something and it's um not asterisk <laughs> I could Google it, and I'm sure I will after I finish this voiceover, but I would like for y'all to tell me down below what this little shape thing is called, um, but I'm doing it, and this is like an eyeliner. If you're if you're familiar with eyeliner and that whole joke, like keep on winging it out, you see, you, you see me make these bigger and bigger and try to get them balanced and balanced and balanced. They're all probably way bigger than they should be. They're not huge. I don't think it took away, but in my head, these were smaller, and I did a little more on the nail. But once I got it where I wanted it to be, it was way too big to put so many. And you can see it's actually kind of a little bit difficult to draw. I mean, the, the concept is simple, but getting it balanced, you can see like I need to add more in that bottom right, that top left. Like you just keep going and trying to get it proportionate. Now I messed up the little wing and I'm just trying to erase it with my thumb, my, my dusty thumbnail. <laughs> I'm just trying to make it happen, guys. And overall, during all this, I I really thought these came out cute. I actually really love them. They, again, they're really long on her hand. And walking around, seeing her from day to day with those nails, oh, my God. Uh, she needs to be in somebody's call center. <laughs> it was crazy to see um, for me. <laughs> um, but you can see I'm, I'm just going and putting these stars. And then I end up going in... Um, in some spaces a second coat in the center um with that white gel polish just to get a little more um pigment because this brush kind of added some streaks but again i like it i always use this presto bambina liner brush even when it's not with the correct product um and you can see in fast speed i really love watching this i'm sorry it's not focused but i really wanted to add the clip so i'm sorry if that hurts your eyes but i think it's real cool just to see the art done this fast we wish we could do it that fast. So you can see I'm using a dotting tool and I'm adding those little star looking dots. And just again, going in with this brush and creating that look and getting that balance. Next, I'm going in with my favorite scratch resistant no wipe top coat that I will happily share with you guys in the future. So subscribe and, you know, stay up to date on the videos. And then I go ahead and cure in the light and that is the end of our look except i wanted to show you guys how i troubleshoot nails now my sister you could see this nail isn't the cleanest shape she put her hand in the light the gel kind of ran to one side she didn't put it in properly okay blamed it on her i'm sorry um and so i'm taking the hand file and you can see i'm cleaning up the shape of this nail you can see i'm going under the nail and i'm creating a straighter sidewall removing any bulk from gel product we don't want to take the color away you can see i've straightened that up i'm sorry it's blurry it's the best shot i had straighten up that sidewall straighten up those sides clean them up but not go in too hard i'm moving excess removing excess product you can see i'm going in with that tip and i'm taking that down because she held her hand um to one side and so that gel just kind of rolled over so i'm just going and taking that out i'm playing it real real close because i don't want to remove any of that product and then i went ahead and buffed it just create a rough surface for that top coat to adhere you can also go in and apply a protein bond so you don't have any separation and then i go in and cure and that fixes that we have a cleaner shape and it's less bulky and this is our final look guys i hope you enjoyed this video my trials my tribulations <laughs> that i endured to create these nails that i really actually love i know they're very long nails we're having fun it's quarantine 
if you don't like it just hit the dislike button it does nothing for me so but if it does something for you that's great for you all right you guys thank you for watching please be safe out there we're still in the middle of a pandemic dead at the beginning middle of it um be safe cover your mouth cover your eyes be kind to each other thank you for watching bye